I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top domestic priority. President Joe Biden says he has a plan to bring down costs for middle class families as Americans face record inflation and rising gas prices. Because of the actions we've taken, America's in the stronger position to meet this challenge than just about any other country in the world. Families impacted by the Marshall Fire are dealing with damage that's not easy to see. It's as clean as it's ever going to get, but we still experience um, symptoms. And parents want a school district to take action, saying officials aren't doing enough about claims of sexual harassment and assault. The students feel like they're not being provided with a safe learning environment. Plus, the abs advance. Anytime you get a, get a chance to end a team season, you, you take that. Um, you take it and run. They're one step closer to the Stanley Cup Finals after sweeping the Predators. I know the families all across America are hurting because of inflation. President Biden is pushing Congress to help fight inflation. Thanks so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Grenauer. Prices for everyday items have been rising now for months. In March, prices jumped to 8.5% higher than the year before. That's the fastest rate in more than 40 years. We'll get a better idea of what things look like tomorrow when April's Consumer Price Index is released. But the president says his plan will lower costs for, middle, for the middle class and middle Middle class families. As Ike Ajaji reports, he's also blaming Republicans for not having a plan of their own. Today, President Biden outlining his plan to lower costs for middle class families. I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top domestic priority. Gas prices at an all-time high, now 437 a gallon nationwide, and diesel hitting new heights too, 550 a gallon according to AAA. Inflation also reflected in the stock market, down almost 17% this year, and families all across the country experiencing sticker shock at the grocery store. The USDA predicting food prices will increase between 5 and 6% this year. The grocery stores are just getting to be so outrageous. President Biden previously announced an effort to lower energy costs by releasing 1 million barrels of oil per day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserves, now extending that for the next six months. He's also calling on Congress to pass clean energy and vehicle tax credits, as well as advancing the strongest ever fuel economy standards for cars and trucks. To help ease the cost of living for consumers, Biden is asking lawmakers to lower the price of prescription drugs, as well as the costs of child care. Biden Biden is also calling for a billionaire's minimum income tax, making the wealthiest Americans and corporations pay what the administration says is their fair share. A stark contrast to Republican Senator Rick Scott's plan, which Democrats say will raise taxes on 75 million American families while discontinuing programs like Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. Every five years, all those programs would cease unless they're re-voted that the Congress comes along and says, yeah, we want to keep these plans. The Biden administration is also pointing to the recent jobs report as an indication of positive signs. 428,000 new jobs were created just last month, and more than 400,000 jobs have been generated for 12 straight months. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Gas prices are reaching a new record, and the spike is only adding to concerns about inflation and a potential recession. AAA says the national average jumped to 437 a gallon. That's higher than the previous record of 433 that was set just in March. Prices have spiked nearly 20 cents in the past week. Some are worried prices could reach 450 in the next week. Colorado's prices are also rising, jumping five cents overnight to 4.10 a gallon. Prices here have risen 15 cents in the past week, just the past week alone. The struggling Adams 14 school district will unveil its plan to the state today on how it plans to turn things around. The State Board of Education was forced to intervene after years of low performance in that district. The board gave the district one month to create an improvement plan. The plan includes a partial manager, so officials will have to explain what responsibilities the district will have and what an outside management company will be responsible for. Now, the district will present its plan at a meeting at 4.30 this afternoon. There is a chance still that the state could reject that plan. 
Parents and students in the Cherry Creek School District are accusing the district of not doing enough about student claims of sexual harassment and assault. Parents who spoke at the district's final board meeting of the year last night also say their kids don't feel safe at school. Now, we've been covering this story since April when one parent told us his daughter had been sexually assaulted. We spoke with that same parent last night and a student who says she doesn't want anyone else to go through what she did. It's heartbreaking when something like this happens to your daughter. It, 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 and I, I beg all of the other parents that if it's happened to you guys, come forward too. Because um, this is the time, you know, we're putting pressure on the district and, and they need it. My sister's in middle school. I just don't want her to go through anything that I've ever been through. And hopefully that there is some disciplinary action, if there can be, which hopefully, which we can do. Now the district uses what's called a no contact agreement when investigating sexual assault claims. It bans communication between the students involved in alleged incidents. The district says investigations use board policies and legal standards. Boulder City leaders will consider tougher gun control laws at a city council meeting tonight. The proposals include a ban on so-called assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Now, Boulder had an assault weapons ban that was struck down by a judge just days before the King Super shooting. The law likely wouldn't have had any impact on that tragedy, though, because the suspect bought his gun in Arvada. The state law passed after the shooting allows cities to enact tougher gun laws. A new bill introduced by Colorado Senator Michael Bennett will give lawmakers a better picture of gun violence in and around schools. The legislation would gather data on school shootings so policies can be made to end gun violence. It would also create a definition for a school shooting which does not exist in federal law. We're starting to see signs of a rebound in Boulder County months after the Marshall Fire. The county issued the first building permit to a couple named Dan and Pam so they can rebuild in the unincorporated area of the fire zone. But the fire's impact goes far beyond just that fire zone. We're talking about smoke damage to homes that weren't necessarily damaged by flames. Denver 7's Christian Lopez met a family who has had their house clean now three different times they're still wondering if it's enough to keep them safe. Amanda Mahaffey's home was spared from the Marshall Fire flames. There's no rhyme or reason to which house got more damage because of the way the winds were so random and strong. They bought the home just three months before the fire. It suffered smoke damage and they just returned home. It's as clean as it's ever going to get, but we still experience symptoms and you know there's a smell still i wake up every morning with a little bit of a sore throat a stuffy nose families like the mahaffey's are now facing several challenges and uncertainties of their own a lot of people are asking what is right what is safe i reached out to an expert james lieberman who is an industrial hygienist from boulder He's been assessing the chemical impacts inside these homes. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of quote unquote scare tactics out there. If they're going to hire somebody, please ask them, make sure that they have their qualifications. Lieberman says his samples found a significant amount of charring and ash in some homes, which can damage electrical equipment like computers. He also found heavy metals and lead in the debris of carpets. Many times when I see carpet in a home that was severely affected, I just tell them to take the carpet out of the home completely and they want to clean the carpet then there's only one method that I suggest and that is hot water deep extraction. He says some things are just too hazardous to keep. Unfortunately, child stuffed toys and things like that, you need to throw those away. Um, mattresses uh, are very difficult to clean. Depending on the condition of your clothing, it can be dry cleaned or put in the washer. Hard surfaces around the home should be fairly easy to clean with your typical products. Lieberman says heating and air conditioning should also be checked and replaced, and you shouldn't try to mask any odors. Like sun. For the Mahaffey family, being back home hasn't been easy. We've got fire zone the whole way, and um, driving past every single day, it's it's an odd thing for children. But day by day, they're working to put the pieces back together. In Louisville, Christian Lopez, Denver 7.
Let's talk sports now. The Broncos will spend Christmas Day in L.A. with the Super Bowl champs. The NFL announced the Broncos and Rams will play Christmas Day, a Sunday, with a normal kickoff time of 2.30 local. Now, this will be the fourth time the Broncos will play on Christmas Day. All three previous matchups were also on the road. This year, they will be one of three nationally televised games. The Broncos and Rams last met in the 2018 season. So here's a look at the Broncos schedule so far. We know that they will play in London on October 30th. The NFL will, will release the complete league schedule on Thursday night. I'm excited. The Avs are moving on in the Stanley Cup playoffs. They swept the Predators in Game 4 last night, winning 5-3, scoring three goals in the third period. The Avs will now have a few days off before their second round matchup. Obviously, we don't know who our opponent is yet, um, but... Uh, it's going to be a familiar, a familiar team. So, for us, it's it's already to that next that next step, and um, we're where we want it to be. But we have to make sure that we can stay tight throughout this uh, little break we have here. So the Avs are going to play the winner of the Minnesota Wild St. Louis Blues series. That series will need at least two more games to decide. The Avs have struggled recently. After the first round, they've lost in the second round of the playoffs in the last three seasons. Well, still ahead, Congress is letting the public learn more about UFOs and decoding your kids' text messages, the warning to parents about the hidden meaning behind certain emojis.